Hi, the purpose of this video is to show the web interface on the Lemco uh, modulator. In this case, it's the HCL 804 uh, CT uh, unit. So the first uh, thing in terms of the physical setup what I've actually done here is I have just connected both the, uh, my local PC is obviously on the network and we've connected a LAN cable uh, onto our local switch so I can access the, um, the, uh, the modulator directly from my PC. So um, I'm just using the keyboard and the mouse connected to the PC now. And I'm just going to type in the default IP address. Uh, so this is just our local LAN address that's uh, been applied here. So it'll be 192.168.1. And the default one here is 200. Now uh, I'm just going to come along and hit return here. And what it's asking me for immediately is the thing. Now um, when I was setting this up on our main network, uh, I, could, I had to actually change the IP address to 200 over to a 120 because there was a conflict I think with my DBR or something. So um, so what I'm gonna do now is one, two, three, four, five, it's password thing. And I'll show you how you can do this here. But when we click in, we'll come up and it actually has a pretty cool interface on it. Now the first time you go to use this, all of the statuses here will be listed as disabled. So what I've, I've done in the, uh, a few minutes ago, I just went in and I just uh, set one up and um, I got it working. So uh, the reason that the first one is disabled is we haven't activated that particular input. Um, input 2 um, has been activated and there's a HDMI input going into it. Uh, input 3 uh, has been activated but there's no HDMI input coming into it. Okay. So what I'll do is just I'll sequentially work through all of the, um, uh, the frequencies um, uh, and, and the, the menus and just give you an overview on it. We're going to mainly focus on the RF part of it, basically being the digital he uh, head end. You will just mention a little bit on the IP stuff. You have to be quite strong in networking really to get into that whole area. So the vast majority of people who are buying this are just really using it for the RF. Although as IP becomes more common, possibly it'll become more popular. Um, so the first thing I'll do, I'll come along and we'll just click on the general here. And then we have a, um, so we're general here and we can just see here that we have uh, eight channel names and each service is by default giving um, a name, program one to program eight. They're di disabled by a uh, thing and the service ID is one to eight. And then we have the bit rate, the audio rate, the LCN, etc. And then we have uh, the default frequency here starts at 474. Uh, and uh, what will happen is, um, the standard sort of channel um, thing is 8 megahertz in between. So um, if 874 is the first, the next one will be 8 up from there. You can set the first one, but each of the additional ones simply come 8 megahertz directly after that. So if you're integrating this with um, running it by itself uh, on a, a same system, uh, you could easily run with the default settings. But if you're integrating it, say, with an existing um, frequency setup where there's Serview or Freeview channels there, you probably want to look at there, see what frequencies are being used, and find space with four channels where you can slide in. Uh, and then it just gives some uh, input here in terms of the mode it's working in. It's working in DVB-T rather than DVB-C, uh, uh, default output on it, and the status, temperatures, etc. Um, what I could do here is I can simply go to the, um, uh, the program list here, and it'll just give the program thing, uh, and it'll just work through each of the different outputs here, and we can work through on that. Uh, and if we go through here, um, what we can see there is a block diagram, and it's really saying we have eight inputs, and uh, they're grouped in twos, then we have transmitter stream one, uh, two, three, and four, and really what we have there is something similar to when we have muxes, we'll say on transmitters, where you can have multiple channels on the same frequency. In the case of the modulator here, it's up to two channels on each frequency. So we'll just come down to the setup here, which becomes a little bit more interesting here. So if I come along here and I went to program one, two, three, four, so it's these ones here. What I could actually do is I could say to myself, well, I want to enable this, and I know I'm always going to be carrying, let's say, I don't know, um, a Serview box that has RT1 on it, we'll say, um, RT1 there. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to apply this. Now, this may or may not give an error, but it's a very quick fix if it does. And I'll just show you this because it's something you'll see in the interface quite a bit. Um, so what we're doing two things here. We're renaming it, and we're also... Um, um, uh, enabling uh, that particular uh, tune, uh, HDMI input on it. So to look at this for a while, it gives an error thing, but what we can do now is we can simply hit the refresh button 
and it should work now okay so we'll actually see that um it has and um, the encoder is now running and indeed if i go back to the general status here again we'll see now that the first one so we'll see this is running where it was disabled before and rt1 is the name on it so you can obviously see that's very handy because you're broadcasting it out you want a certain channel name to go with it okay so that's on the input side and just the rest that was there was the lcns all the rest of it uh, the video PIDs etc so there is scope to change um, those as well uh, but in general we'll say in our test here we've simply run with the default settings on it okay so we can see here that we've carried through and it's only showing us the first um, three because they're the only ones we've enabled uh, I could uh, enable them all it just takes a few minutes to do it uh, so I'll just set it quickly do it there and when we look at the output section here then um, more interesting here uh, we'll come down here and we'll go to um, RF output on it. So it just gives an idea of where the frequency here is. So we could make a decision here that we want to come along and we're going to, we'll say, um, start um, broadcasting out, we'll say, from 530 instead of here. Okay. So what I could do here is just go 530 um, and 00. And uh, what I can do here is apply. So we'll see. It should not just change the first one, but what it should actually do is push um, uh, output 2, 3, and 4 to be, um, in, in turn, 8 megahertz uh, blocks ahead of the other one here. So we can see there, and that's how we've been able to do that and push it through. Now, a really cool feature here is that you can actually, on each of the outputs, you can control here and grab it. So if you thought, we'll say, that one of the signals was outputting at too high of a level for some reason uh, and causing interference with other ones, you can actually drop it, uh, one or all of the frequency uh, uh, output levels down slightly lower, but by default we're generally setting them to the max here, okay? And um, so we just have different uh, payload factors, etc. there. So it's all interesting to see that. If we look at the IP streaming here, we'll see that we have it here, and what we have is an IP address here, and um, we're able to come along and uh, do settings and changes here on it. Um, and then we have, we'll say, um, uh, transmission string one, two, uh, three, and four. Now, if I'm right here, uh, in terms of where I would actually go to change the IP address, I would actually go and do it here. Yeah, okay, so that's, um, that's uh, there. So, uh, and then we'll just go out to the transmission stream uh, thing here, the TS. And uh, we'll just see here that it's just giving an idea on it here and the, the, the various settings there on it. And then we're into the NIT here, which is basically the network ones here again. So again, I generally wouldn't have um, to changed on these at all. Uh, when we go into LAN here then, we can see what our IP address is here. And we have again uh, an ability here to change it. So if I wanted to change this, we'll say, I think in some of our earlier tests, we set this up in 120. I could actually change it here and then actually save the things. And what we need to do then, of course, is change the address that we're on here because it'll, it'll flick over to the thing. Um, in terms of the actual administration here, uh, this is where you can change the password. So the password by default, and this is 12345, but possibly you want to change it to something that's uh, more secure. We have a system restart here. This is basically when we want to come along and just shut down the unit and turn it back on. So it's powered off, powered back on, basically, from the software thing. But a factory default here means that we want to just go back to our things. So earlier in the day, we had, we'll say, all eight of the modulation um, outputs set up and enabled all the rest of it. But when we wanted to get it back to a more basic one, rather than going back in and manually turning each of them uh, back off, I actually went in here and chose the restore with DBBT. It took a couple of minutes to come back, but when it powered back up then, I just killed the browser, pulled it back up, and then we were able to log back in and it had come back to its default IP address as well, for example. So we have the options of import and export to configs here. So we have uh, choose a file, um, and what we can do here is we can export out um, uh, the config file and save it off. So if we came along, we'll say, and we had set up a head end and we're very happy with the general setup on it and it was something we wanted to replicate at a later point, what we can do is we can export it out and then at a later point we can actually import uh, the file back on. And you can see here uh, that that's the export option and then the choose file here will obviously just browse your USB stick or the hard drive, whatever way you want to access it. 
and then the firmware upgrade. If Lemco come out with a new uh, latest firmware, all the rest with extra features or fixes, things like that, you can actually just choose it and directly load it directly on again. So you can see overall the interface on it, I think, is extremely good. Uh, the setup time to get it, it's just literally a minute of LAN cable directly from um, our modulator over to our switch and then come along and then we just went in our Firefox browser and typed in what we knew was going to be the default, default uh, local area network IP for it which was 192.168.1.200 so overall we'll say it's a great piece of kit and the interface doesn't let it down either overall I, I, I think it was extremely easy to use the reality for us is that we got this unit um, plugged in a few different HDMI inputs into it and we had it up and running on a multi-stream setup probably in the space of 10 or 15 minutes so you know if we can get it out of the box like that we're reasonably clever but no geniuses either so um, it's very applicable for, um, um, for commercial uses.